And if you'd like a copy of this blab, if you missed it, then Jess has been doing a really awesome job posting them on YouTube. And I think we had a, a girl in here, Leslie Hale, I think her name is. And she found out about the blab from your YouTube. So oh, really? she, she, yeah, she joined me on a Periscope earlier and <laughs> said that she was going to be here tonight. And she, she was one of the ones that was on and then she's now not. So hopefully oh, she'll okay. come back. Um, there's technical difficulties. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started introducing ourselves and we'll jump right into the topic today. We're going to be talking about goal setting and how you can properly goal set. What's the best way to goal set to actually reach your goals. And we're primarily talking about fitness goals here. Although I really believe a lot of these apply to life goals, business goals, um, both Jess and I are entrepreneurs. We are business women. And a lot of these same principles that we apply to our fitness routine also apply to our business and our, and our life goals. Yeah. So I'm Hannah Davis. I have a personal training business here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, I am an author of an ebook. I'm on the advisory board for Cosmopolitan Magazine. I've been featured in numerous other national publications, just out spreading fitness knowledge, correct science-based fitness knowledge. I met Jessica when we were both living and working in New York City. Now Jess is in LA, in LA. so tell us about yourself, Jess. Yes, um, I have been in the fitness and training industry for about 10 years now. I can't believe it's been that long, but time flies when you're having a good time. And I've really loved it because it's just so amazing to be able to help people really achieve the goals that they set for themselves and, and really feel good and really feel energetic. And, you know, it's just nothing feels better than being fit. It's just my favorite thing. So I love fitness. I love the whole fitness industry. I'm really into nutrition as well. And me and my husband run a business called Live Lean TV, where we have a YouTube channel. We offer tons of free fitness and nutrition content on there. So I highly recommend you check that out. It's youtube.com forward slash Live Lean TV. And what else? I also train clients in person and online. Yes, perfect. Um, so we're here talking to you today about goal setting. Like I mentioned, if anybody has a particular goal in mind, whether it's fitness, whether it has to do with business or a life goal, um, feel free to jump in the broadcast uh, or at least type it up. Let us know, you know, what's a major goal that you've set for yourself that you have hopes of reaching. Uh, we're really interested to know that. Um, so I'll, I'll start by talking about in fitness, we hear a lot about SMART goals. Have you guys heard the acronym, acronym SMART, S-M-A-R-T? It stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Realistic, and Timely. And I didn't miss anything there, right? That was it, yeah. Okay. So why don't we just uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Jess, you want to give us an example of a specific goal? When we're talking about fitness, let's talk about fitness first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always try to get people to hone in on their goals and like make them more specific because if the goal is too vague, like so many people come and just say, I want to get fit. But it's like, well, what does that really mean to you? What is fit? You know, so I think defining that and being really, really precise and specific is going to help you figure out how and when and just all the details that are required for you to actually reach that goal. So I like to tell people usually something really specific, like I want to lose five pounds of fat and gain two pounds of muscle, something like that by, uh, you know, October next year. So you got to give like first, you know, a certain amount and then also a certain date that you're going to achieve it by. And then you can really work backwards and figure out the steps of what needs to happen for this goal to happen by this date. Right, right. So, and on, she kind of touched on, because they do kind of, they're interrelated. And when you're creating a specific goal, a specific goal ends up being measurable, like Jess mentioned. So mm -hmm. we need to know, a, we need to write down exactly how much do you want to lose? Exactly what do you want your, would you like to see your body fat percentage 
where do you want to see it at? Um, and then if we move on, and then you also mentioned, you know, timely, the timeline of I want to achieve this goal by, you know, o October 31st. Mm -hmm. um, so putting a date to it. Uh, and then before, what, what's going to help you choose that timely goal is to make sure that it is, uh, number one, attainable and realistic. And realistic. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, so, you know, if does it really, you know, let's say your goal of losing, you know, 100 pounds puts you at a let's see, puts you at, you know, the lowest body weight you've ever been in your life. You've never been at that body weight. Um, you don't, you have a nine to five job. You can't work out biggest loser style. Then you may need to reassess that goal and make sure that that's something that's going to be attainable for um, your, your genetic mm -hmm. um, body type. Uh, as well as, you know, uh, being realistic in your, in your daily life or your daily activity. Yeah. Right. So yeah, if you're not sure what's realistic, you can kind of ask around, ask questions, do your research, look at what other people have done. I always get the question, like, what is realistic mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like rate of weight loss? And my answer is usually approximately two pounds of fat per month, but it completely depends on your starting point because someone who's starting right. at 300 pounds is going to lose fat a lot right. faster than someone who's starting at 120 pounds. So it's, you really have to look at your own body and like, where are you at in the big picture of things? How far are you from the goal? How much fat do you actually have to lose? And then the rate is going to really depend on that. It's also going to depend right, on how right. severely you change. Your Thank habits. you, Lakeisha, for sharing. Guys, feel free to share the blab. Um, let's see. Leslie asked, does, does this move really slow because I can't see anything? Yeah, guys, can you hear can us? You hear? Can you hear what we're saying? Oh, got it fixed. Got it. Okay. <laughs> we're like, talking. oh, excellent. All right. Okay. Perfect. Um, so, we're, you know, we're just okay. kind of wrapping up that creating smart goals for yourself when you're talking about fitness. And, you know, really, if you think about it, that also applies to creating life goals and, and um, business goals. So I also mm -hmm. think there mm -hmm. are, there's more than just that to consider when you're trying to goal set to really kind of set yourself up for for success. Would you agree that there's, there's kind of more than just that? Um, just, well, more than just, more than like, just being realistic, you mean? specific, measurable. So let's say you do all these things. Do you have a specific, yeah. measurable, attainable, realistic, timely goal? How do you execute that to make, to be successful? So that's what, yeah. that's what we really want to share with you guys today is how do you execute these SMART goals so that you're actually successful? Uh, we have a question. I always have the issue of starting and stopping. Can you give me tips on how to stay motivated? It's a really great question. Um, yeah, and that's exactly what we want to yeah. share with you. Um, my first tip would be to create rituals that align with your SMART goals. So you've got to figure out um, what you need to do to, and uh, Lakeisha, am I saying, your, hopefully I'm saying your name right. Um, throw out a goal that you've worked on, that you've started and stopped before. So we can give very, or feel free to jump in so we can give very specific examples. But let's say somebody has the goal, since we're talking about fitness, has the goal to lose 20 pounds in two months. Okay. So I'd say depending on the client's weight, that's very possible. Um, it's realistic, it's attainable, and they put it in a time timely frame. So now we've got to create rituals that will align those, those smart goals. So we need to start writing 
down workout schedules. We, we physically need to write there. There's a lot of power in actually putting things in your schedule. So yeah, telling yourself you're going to work out, you're going to make it to the gym every day. Sounds great. Mm. But unless you put it in your schedule and you give it some power, there's a good chance you're going to miss most of those workouts. Um, creating, for example, I, I periscoped earlier on not getting enough water, but how important water is yeah. for losing weight, uh, for recovery, um, for detoxification. Uh, so a ritual I've put in my daily habit is before I allow myself a cup of coffee, I have to finish an entire eight ounce glass of water with lemon in it. And so just kind of like putting rituals in your daily life, establishing rituals uh, to help you reach those goals are really going to help. Do you have any Mm -hmm. um, ideas, Jess? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think scheduling is a huge one because like as personal trainers, we know that a lot of our clients, like when they don't have appointments, they don't work out. I'll ask them, did you do anything yesterday? Did you do your homework over the weekend? It's usually a no, Mm -hmm. but yet they always show up to sessions. Like when it's in the books and when it has money on the line, you will go almost a hundred percent of the time every time. But when it's not, when there's no sort of person waiting for you, there's like sense of urgency or appointment time, then you're probably going to skip it. You're going to find something else to do. You'll get busy with the laundry or you'll do something to do or you'll just do everything else to do, avoid your love. So I think if, you're, if your goal is to work out, put it in your schedule. I like, feel like it's an appointment and it's the most important thing to pay. And you, know, you kind of just your own trainer a little bit if you, if you don't want to ask to train. I do highly recommend working with one. But if it's not affordable at this time or if you just have any aversion to it, then be your own trainer right, and make right. yourself show up at the um, time you said you to. Does anybody, Jess, you're kind of going in and out, at least from what I can hear. I'm wondering if that's, if anybody else is hearing that or if it's just a problem with, with my, now you sound fine, but I just, oh. if, okay. So I, I think, I think oh. you were going in and out, but basically Jess was just reinforcing what I was saying and saying that her clients show up to every session Um, because they've scheduled, they've made an appointment. So if you do that for yourself in your schedule, you're going to be much more likely to make it happen and get to the gym. You've allotted out a time to, to focus on yourself. And you need to do that with nutrition too. You need to make a grocery list. You need to make time to go shop. You need to make time to food prep. And when you put it in your, your, your schedule, you will do it. Instead of sitting down, like being exhausted, getting home and just sitting in front of the TV, if on your list was after work, go grocery shopping, you're going to instead go there and not end up in front of the the television where now you're like too tired to get back up and go out and grocery shop. Because you know you've been there. You've been there with the gym too. Like you get home after work with plans to go to the gym. You sit on the couch and you're like, I don't think I'm going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no seriously this stuff happens to us too it's like sometimes people think we're immune to that but we're not it's just the only difference is fitness is so important it's such a high right. priority on both of our lists right so it's also about prioritizing things in your life like which is more important to you between watching that right. favorite tv show or getting your workout in you know you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons of things like what will happen if you miss that tv show like you could probably watch it right. later but missing that workout is going to be detrimental to your health. It's going to set you back from your goals. You're not going to be getting moving forward at all. So just realizing the importance of each workout and how it contributes to the total picture, I think is a big one. Right. Right. Don't underestimate the power of one workout. Right. Totally. Better uh, release the fat. What do you think of that? The The unconscious doesn't like the the word lose, not in our culture uh I don't know what do you think release you know what's my favorite yeah, I like to burn, burn. I like, I like to, to melt the melt the fat right. but right. <laughs> and it, essentially Destroy that's it. what our body does Jess is burn it so 
Um, so that does burn. Yeah. Right. That's so that's probably the best word through. to, yeah. Like where to go? Lose it. That? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And everyone talks about like losing weight and weight loss. Yeah. I think that that sort of um, verbalization should be thrown out and we should talk yes. about burning right. muscle right. and burning fat. Really, that's like two like goals of working out and eating right. That's what you should be aiming to do. Always. Right. Burning fat, building muscle. Then you end up with a lean body instead of right. Quick, like, right. Like, yeah. So um, building muscle also burns fat. So killing two birds with one stone. Um, right. So we talked about creating smart mm -hmm. goals. We talked about um, in order to make that successful, create rituals that align with those smart goals. Uh, another tip I would have is uh, don't take yourself too seriously. And really what I mean by that is we're all going to stumble and we're all not, none of us are going to be perfect. And we do too much like beating ourselves up when we don't align ourselves perfectly with our goals, when we, when we miss a workout, when we yeah. miss an opportunity to eat nutritiously, um, we, we just beat yeah. ourselves up. So don't, don't take it all too seriously and just trust the process and continue to, to push forward. And um, if, you, if you feel defeated, from the get-go, you've been defeated. So success in reaching your goals is going to come just through, you have to fail to succeed. So when you realize that failing mm -hmm. is okay, you have to fail to succeed, you're going to be in a lot better, mm -hmm. better place. Right. And the feeling of being a success is really important because if you always feel like a failure, you right. probably are going to be a failure. Because whatever you're thinking about and feeling about, it sort of becomes your reality. Right. right. So start, you know, paying more attention, more energy towards the feeling right. of success. The power of positive thinking. Um, and I talk, you know, I talk. It's so real. It, so it real. is. And I, I was saying, um, or this week I created, I can't believe it took me this long to create. Well, it's only been the past year that I've had my very own four walls um, <laughs> studio, but I, I made a new rule in my studio that there's no negative self-talk. It just started happening oh, yeah. more and more. Clients would come in and they're self-deprecating and, um, and that's not yeah. why they're there. You're there to, to right. improve yourself. And so I made that rule and I, you know, probably get a little Jillian Michaels about it. And, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a punish. What do you do to enforce that? Oh, 10 push-ups. Like at any time, oh. you know, something negative comes out of, out of their mouth. I'm like, you're yeah. going to do 10 push push-ups because nobody likes push-ups. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're going to have really strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, within reason, if they're doing too many, I'll end up, I'll throw some pull-ups in there. So we balance oh, yeah, it out. <laughs> I should make them do burpees. That's so yeah. true. I should make them do burpees. Nobody likes burpees. <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> And you know what um, else is like, make them say something positive each rep. Like, no, I am, I am yeah. bettering myself. Yeah. <laughs> Some positive. Rep. Yeah. Um, so Jess, do you have. Yeah. Mantras is huge with me. Like when I do my coaching, I always make people say mantras and like, whatever your goal is, you know, I am getting fit. Yes. I am building lean muscle. Like you just have to, it sounds like kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, like woo woo, but this really works. You're sort of like washing yourself. And I did this to myself a lot when I first started training. I had to. It was the only thing that kept me going was like just reinforcing believing what getting more. Affirmations. Yeah. It's so yes, true. Affirmations. Um, and also the it changes it totally changes your mindset. So for example, when if let's say you're trying to battle a sugar addiction and you walk around saying, I can't have that. I can't, I can't uh, like, it just, it like makes you weak. But if you just yeah. walk around saying, Oh, I don't eat that. I don't eat like, do you, how crazy that little mm -hmm. switch of vocabulary is mm -hmm. like, Oh, I just don't eat. I don't eat that. All of a sudden yeah. it's, you're not like depriving yourself. Yeah. You're empowering yourself. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm not eating that right now. 
Yeah. I like to just save it for later. Say, oh, I'll have that later. I'll have right. that. Right. Oh, that's a good one. Like when I, when I reach my goal, then I'll have it. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it going. Yeah, exactly. Like that's a reward I'm going to treat myself to once I reach said goal, you know, because you don't want to think that you'll never have it again because yeah. that, <laughs> that kind of like makes me really sad <gasps> thinking I'll never get piece of candy again yeah. you know but if you think oh I'll have it just not now then it's like I'm gonna oh, well, um fine. we're getting a no, call in like, oh, from later. Hillary Morris I'm just gonna let someone hop in nice and see what Hillary has to say cool does anyone else have to hi Hillary to share? maybe Hillary has one hold on oh she disappeared hi. I wonder if she accidentally called us Hillary Come back. Um, okay, so maybe we'll we'll have her back. We'll see. Um, so kind of moving along, um, yeah. we're we're talking about success, talking about fitness. How do you actually uh, create smart goals and make them happen? Um, one big thing that you guys are doing, even by being on this blab, is asking for help getting getting coaching and whether that means yeah. official coaching hiring a, a trainer or or a nutritionist or just like a health coach or life coach depending on what kind of goal you're working on it's super important to get help from people that have been there um it's an accountability system it's an it's a motivation yeah system and it also helps you work through some of those those toughest issues um that you're you're battling with it helps you understand why maybe something in your process isn't working why you may not be getting success as fast as you think you should be getting it um so it's really important to seek out coaching not to do this mm -hmm. alone so mm -hmm. Anything yeah. else to add, Jess? Those are, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I've, what I recommend to, to kind of get success with your fitness goals is everything we just talked about um, without getting too nitty gritty. <laughs> I would love to know, yeah, I would love to know about your first fitness Mine? goal, if you don't mind sharing like, um, what well, you did. My first fitness goal, I'm trying to think, you know, you I was, I was definitely, always into I fell in love with weight tra training all the way back in high school I took a, a weight lifting class and I just thought it was like so you know it was like the, my last semester in high school and I didn't I could have graduated early but I was like no let me hang out with some boys in the weightlifting room let me that'll be fun so um <laughs> me and and it totally was um but I all really kind of fell in love with like how how empowering it was and learning these, you know, we were learning these Olympic moves. I just thought it was so cool. Uh, so, you know, my first goal was actually just to attain knowledge about, about weightlifting and yeah. And what it, yeah. Every exercise and what it did exercise. to your body. Um, I would say the first fitness yeah. goal was definitely to kind of control the hereditary gut that runs in my family. So, so I didn't uh -oh. have so much of a problem with the, the physical fitness side of things. I, I was an athlete. I ran cross country. I did. I was always very active, but my nutrition really wasn't on point. And yeah. my first goal was battling was pretty much battling addictions to, to like fast foods, to Bojangles in college, to Wendy's, to just all this crap I was, I was eating. And I mean, it was, it, it was quite an uphill battle, believe it or not, because, you know, you're a college student and yeah. um, that's, that's just what you eat. And you've, you've got everybody in there um, 
Hi, Zendra yeah. Ashley, she's back. <laughs> Good to have you again. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. Happy Friday. I know. I don't. It's just not a drinking night for me. <laughs> I feel like having a, a nice, clear-headed Saturday morning. So I'm I'm foregoing. Yeah. Oh, oh Denver Ashley, when you met Jessica, you didn't go. Right? Yeah, you didn't ah. go work out at her gym. Sorry, we never. Went. That's too bad. I was busy with um, grandma. Yeah. Didn't even university lived at home. Yeah. That's yeah. I yeah. definitely ate terribly when I was in college. That's yeah. That's when it started and, um, for me too. It was around you know, those college years. I wish I could say I I conquered it within a, even a year, but it was it was probably it was a lot of years. Um, it was I would I would. Yeah. Not have a problem eating healthy, but I would always eat junk on top of it because I guess the good thing was that I realized that uh, my body needed the nutrients of good, healthy, nutritious food. So when I would go eat fast food, it wouldn't mean that I would deprive myself yeah. because I felt bad about it. I never beat myself up that way. I would still go, I would on top of it, yeah. have something nutritious because I knew that I, I needed it. But, you know, I was constantly at that point in college, I was taking yeah. exercise science classes, I was taking nutrition classes. So I was already equipping myself with knowledge. And I think that was the most important thing for me to ultimately um, get through some of this. I also, yeah, Bojangles is so good. Someone knows. Oh, my God, you got to come to the South. I've never yeah. heard of Bojangles. What is that? <laughs> It's, it's, it, no, it's what Cajun it's chicken like and biscuit. Cajun, like, yeah, chicken and fried chicken, fried chicken and biscuits oh, and um, bowberry, blueberry biscuit. I mean, it's like insanely good. Yeah, yeah. And the okay. fries are awesome too. Okay. <laughs> but I really don't have <laughs> those angles anymore. Um, New. List item. Oh crap. We're supposed yeah. to be like inspiring yeah. you guys. <laughs> well, about once a year oh, is about how much I have those angles these days. Yeah, of course. And it, we should be really clear right. that it's not like we never eat junk food ever again. You know, just like to be healthy and fit, it doesn't mean that you have to like swear off junk food for the rest of your life. Like if I went yeah. to the South, I'd probably eat up Bojangles. I'm sure you would too. So hopefully, like, you all get the idea that we're not like, right. saints right. right here. We but it's like, about the majority of your, your, <laughs> right, that really makes What you do most of the time, yeah. And also, I think where your mental focus is, like, are you focused on living a lean lifestyle and you occasionally have the cheat, or are you focused on junk food yeah. and then occasionally live the fitness lifestyle? You know what I mean? You got to make sure your priorities are right. right so that yeah, and most of the time, cheat meals are you okay. It to be. Totally. You, know, um, you just want to yes. be careful that they don't happen too, too often, multiple times a week. And it, depending no, on your goals mostly. too, you know, okay. when, when I try to remind my client, everybody wants mm -hmm. to know what I eat and when I eat and how much I eat. And I, I have to, yeah. you know, preface it always by saying, first of all, consider my habits, my daily habits. I'm active throughout the entire day, most days. Yes. Um, I'm constantly lifting weights for clients, doing mm -hmm. this, that. Uh, I already genetically do have a fast metabolism. Um, I know that I know that it can be mm -hmm. thrown off. It has for my sisters who genetically have a fast metabolism, but they have lived life very differently from me, and I see the the predisposition that I could where I could be versus where I am now because I'm very focused on on health so yes. that said um I, I still am somebody that as, if I treat my body well I have a fast metabolism so yes. that allows me to to ha eat bigger portions without you know and get, yield a different result as somebody else maybe that's that's eating the same portion same um type of stuff as I am, but not getting the same result as me. So 
Yeah. Yeah. It's so not true that it's like calories in, calories out because there are so many factors. Like someone who's running around on their feet all day is going to have a way different metabolic rate than somebody who sits on a computer for all day and then sits in front of the TV and just sits. So you guys have to really, you know, when you're thinking, when you're figuring out your portion sizes and how much you should eat, it should be really individual to what is your life currently like? And what is your body currently like? What's your metabolism style? All of those things are really important to figure right. out. Don't right. just and, mimic whatever. You know, so that also goes back to the point that this is a process. So you can't, you're not, you may not get it right. You may not reach your goal immediately, even following these principles because there are individualistic qualities that come into play. And sometimes it's going to be about tweaking this or that to make mm-hmm. your goals happen. Um, but that's part of the fun yeah. of this, this process. Um, just not, don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. It is fun. Yeah. You just don't get down on yourself. Yeah, exactly. If, even if you fail, even if you did the opposite of what you intended to do, instead of getting really pissed off and quitting, you should be inspired right. and think, oh, well, I just learned what not to do. Uh, thanks, so KP. <laughs> KP Kelly's back. Well, <laughs> Feel free yeah, to join that, anybody. Yeah. Um, so we've been talking <laughs> about how to truly get success when you make fitness goals. I said this applies to business and life. Um, Jess, do you have any kind of examples of applying this? Because both of us are business women. We uh, run our own businesses and there, I mean, overwhelming goals when you're a business owner. Oh, what a yeah, like totally. to-do list. Yeah. Well, you know, all the same, all the same mm-hmm. things apply. Like what you said about setting smart goals, like, you know, when you first start a business venture or I don't know any goal in life, you probably are going to mm-hmm. have goals that are too big and too vague. So I think just like, you know, chiseling them down really. And what I did is I created like, you take out a sheet of paper and you create this like upside down triangle. And, you know, at the top, you put like your big audacious, like hairy goal, whatever it is, something that really scares the pants off you. And you just have no idea how you're ever going to get to that. And then in the next like category, you just draw some lines across in the next one that's a little bit smaller. You just write, what you can Mm -hmm. do before you get to that big goal. And then before that, and before that, before that. And when you get to the tip of the triangle, it should be something that you can do either right now or today. So just breaking, chunking things down, like really, really small into something you can do like immediately to help. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's a really cool thing. I haven't heard of, of doing that before. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, Like a goal funnel, I think is what it's called. That's a great idea. Um, yeah so even when it comes to health and fitness and weight loss if your goal is to lose 100 pounds that's a lot that could be really overwhelming and it might stop you in your tracks because you don't even know what to do to start but if you just start breaking it down and then the very last piece is like go for a walk around my block well that you could do you know and you do that every day and right easy it's attainable you know it's not scary so if you just start doing the little things that are not scary and they start that is great advice I have to say I feel like this is that's that's like must be what you do in your <laughs> health coaching too suggest people make a little I think I'm going to use that for yeah. health coaching I'm going to steal I'm going to steal it Jess do that funnel, do that funnel. The triangle yeah and you know where I learned that it actually brings me to another point that you made earlier I learned Mm. that from working with someone. I hired somebody to help me help coach me in business because that was one of my first obstacles to getting where I wanted to be with online business is that, you know, I had, I needed help. I was so lost, so confused. I had to hire someone and that person on that system and it just changed things for me. So I think anytime you feel completely stuck, like even more so than doing little things to get there, just ask somebody, just like reach help. A little intimidated? Why Hop intimidated? in. We're, we don't bite. Does anybody have any other specific questions <laughs> about goals, goals you're trying to reach? What's a good way to get there? Do you ever feel like you just want to get under the covers and like just stay there? 
for when, when we're talking either bit, and I'm sure some people feel that way with fitness goals. Like this is never going to happen. I've been trying to do this and I, it's just, it's not working. I just want to throw in the towel. Like it seems too hard. Yeah. How do you, how do you Jeff get past oh, those, those moments of defeat? I'm under the covers uh, now. How did I? <laughs> Bye, yeah. yeah, no, I, and it's going to happen. You know? Like, it's going to happen. Um, you like, you've got to, ex- first of all, I guess, is yeah. to expect those, those low moments that they're going to happen yeah. and, and just kind of like own it, yeah. but also so. understand that it's, it is a phase, it's a cycle and you'll come out of it, especially as, as long as you, you continue to create lists and continue to, to create rituals for yourself and go through the motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's just take one day at a time, really, I think is the only thing you can do because, yeah, you have days like that. And just, I think, continuing mm-hmm. to focus. Focus is a really big thing. Because you, if you feel really bad and really down about not reaching your goal, you're like losing focus and maybe you go on to something else or you forget about it completely. Um, and you sort of get into this like bad habit of telling yourself that you're a failure right. and that you can never achieve such and such. I think that's right. like the danger zone. It's like, don't ever believe that you can't have some, if the truth is, if any human being on this earth has that thing that you want, then you can do it too, you know, because we're all human and it's just one foot in front of the other. If you if they can achieve it, so can you. So you shouldn't ever feel like you're less or that right. you know they're in this league and you're in a different league. Right. We're right. all in one league. Oh my gosh! Check yeah, you feel accomplished at the end absolutely. in the the day. Um, that might be the most yeah. valuable piece of information on this entire blab is to is to create list. And I'm sure you <laughs> yeah. all heard that at, before. And maybe at yes. one point we're creating lists and you're not. And that happens with me too. I mean, I'm, I'm creating lists. I'm, and, and I realize how much more productive I am when I'm creating lists. But it still doesn't mean you've, mm-hmm. you, we're still not perfect. So I fall out of the habit here and there of creating lists. Now with, with fitness, yeah. I do think when you've done something for so long, we talked about this last week, it, it just becomes part of your, your habit. And so it's not as hard to eat nutritious mm-hmm. when like, that's so, just, you go shopping and this is what you get. Yeah. You're, you're right. So yeah, at some point, of course it. It, it gets easier. Um, at least in terms of fitness, because mm-hmm. you know, it, it yeah. is a lifestyle. We've got Bronze Body coming in. I think I've yeah. seen him on here before. Be yes, nice, nice to have him join. What's up, Mark? <laughs> Hi. How are you doing tonight? Good. How are you? Good to have you on the Good. Blab. Great. Thank you. Um, I, I always chuckle a little bit when everyone says that name because it's my company name, so that's why I put my first name on there a lot. But um, <laughs> the question I had it w- was based around kind of a mental – kind of focus and, and, and consistency aspect. I've talked with other fellow friends and blabs and things like this. And um, in that situation where they're, someone's trying to improve their life, their skin, their body, their fitness. And I brought up the, uh, the, the idea once in a blab saying, when, that, when you yourself are home alone, away from your personal trainer, and after the lists and everything, and you have those thoughts going through your head like, I'll just – take a break and kind of go back into that conditioned routine that they've done for years. How do you as trainers, <laughs> what do you tell them maybe in words or in lists to help? I mean, in the, in that beginning of their journey to, to kind of break those habits, to get a better body, what mm-hmm. do you advise them? What do you, what do you share with them to help them in those moments when they're alone? You want to go first, Jeff? <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so tricky. And that's always mm-hmm. been something that I personally have struggled with as a trainer is like when somebody's not with you, they're not in your presence and you're not in contact with mm-hmm. them. Yeah, it's completely out of your control. And this was so hard for me to get used to when I was first a trainer. I remember like in my very first training certification, I like pulled the instructor aside and I was like, 
um, excuse me, I really want to be like the best <laughs> trainer in the world. And I want all of my clients to get phenomenal results. I, I was like, how can I do that? And he was like, <laughs> he was like, it's not under your control. He was like, it's your, it's completely your client's prerogative. And the best you can do is motivate them, yeah. inspire them with the yeah. time that they are with you, but you can't control the other 23 yeah. hours of their day. So I think just the best thing I've done as a trainer is like letting go of that sort of like mm-hmm. grip of control kind of, and realizing that they are going to do what they're going to do without me. So the best I can do yeah. is the best I can do in that hour. And reinforcing, reiterating that their habits away from me are also important to their goals, you know, all of that stuff. But you yeah, can't and I definitely agree with that to a point. I th- I think um, I always joke that that half of my job is a therapist, the other half is personal trainer. And I think oh, a lot yeah. of times when when people are battling with with regressing or just falling back into old patterns, is to to really emotionally figure out why. Um, Because when you Mm. start investing in a personal trainer and paying all of this money to to achieve your goals, it's not because you don't want to do that. You do want to, you want results or at least, you know, they're, they're definitely clients I'm sure Jess has had and that I've had that have personal trainers just to have a personal trainer. And I, I think that happens definitely Some, in metropolitan yeah. cities with people with lots of money that just don't have anything else to send that. Right. It's right. like an exception. Um, <laughs> one thing, when we talk about kind of letting go of that control, Jessica's like, I've definitely been there and had to do that. And you have to, and at, you know, <laughs> when you have a client for five years that hasn't gotten any physical, like visual change. Wow that can get frustrating, but, but I have to also realize that Mm -hmm. that client seeing me three hours a week, it's yeah, that's three times a week training with me. Um, in those, in those hours, they're still experiencing physiological change, positive physiological changes in their body that are benefiting their health. So I've got it. I've got to get past the visual (laughs) progress and, and know that, still exercises inducing positive physical change, physiological changes. There have definitely been clients mm-hmm. that emotionally or psych- psychologically, I haven't been able to get through to. And that's not to say I, and to these clients, I suggested they see another trainer. Okay. Be, because if I can't get through to somebody, there's a good chance somebody else may be able to. And, you know, yeah. Sometimes it's about the but, right match. Again, the client's going to do what he or she wants to do. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes no trainer can help a person. Two questions. They're not ready. Have you, either of you ever recommended someone to, at the same time they're working out with you or going through your, your training, to, have, to see a therapist at the same time? And do you think that would be a great addition to have, say, in your business or wherever you work, to have therapists there on staff? I do, but I, but I can't say that I've gotten yeah. to a point where I've, I've felt, and, and less than I have in the past dealt with, with somebody with an eating disorder. And in those cases, I have felt comfortable pushing them towards therapy and getting help that I'm not capable of, mm-hmm. of, of providing, um, but not to someone who yeah. I felt like needed therapy. <laughs> Well, you made a good I, you made a good point about the five year client. I know. I know. I mean, I yeah. I think he was. I mean, he was in therapy actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he was. So, you- and I've I've also had clients that are they come to me already in therapy. You know, they it's an addition. So sometimes it's done. You know, the person already knows they need therapy as well. And the fitness training is just on top of that. Um, sometimes maybe someone doesn't know and maybe you think they need it, but you know, who are we really to say it's a personal decision for them. So, 
you know, we can recommend it, but I've, I've never really had like a therapist that I work in conjunction with or anything like that. I would say 90% of clients oh, and then they, are good. They, you know, they don't really need stuff. to see their I mean, I'm coming from a very kind of the physical end of yeah. it too. My company is, is about skincare products and right now it's two self tanner products. So it's all about the out, the outer and the looking great and, and mm -hmm. products, but the more and more I'm talking to people and, and I kind of do once or twice a week, a little show where I invite people to talk, be it skin, be it uh, the body, even psychological. I had, I talked to psychologists mm -hmm. as a guest the other day and it seems to be that aspect coming back in your focus, your, your getting over habits, getting over walls to get to that level of seeing some physical gains, physical rewards, results. And so I just thought I'd bring that up. Right. What your opinion was. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, we talked a lot about making sure that your goals are small, small and, uh, or in achievable kind of segment, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times what happens with, with training and trying to achieve fitness goals in particular is they continuously see the end result. They, their brain keeps going to that end result. So I guess a, an answer to your question is a lot of times with clients, I, I make it about something entirely different than, um, than physical attributes, which is really the majority of why anybody comes to a personal trainer. Sure. Um, you know, so if I, if I make the goal about, you know, look, we're going to, you're going to be able to do three sets of 20 push-ups or whatever, like that is our goal. Then the byproduct of getting stronger and building muscle is going to be leaning out. And of, of course, nutrition has to be a, mm -hmm. a major portion of it. But giving giving clients homework mm. and creating a, a stronger accountability systems, which I do, I use a I use an app called BodyStream that works very well with me and my clients because we can create private circles mm. and they post their meals, they post their workouts in these private circles. So it doesn't have to be a, a broad social media thing where everybody's looking at it, but it's easier to do than writing something mm. down. Um, it's not quite as invasive as tech constantly texting, but it's an accountability system that, that works. Um, I have to say, I'll say one other thing that I've, I've found that is helping in New York. I primarily did private one-on-one -on -one training and moving to Tennessee. It's a lot more economical for a lot of these, these folks to do semi-private training. And I'm actually really mm -hmm. loving what I'm seeing with two and three people working yeah. together and that accountability system mm -hmm. that it creates. And I'm seeing a lot better progress, faster and better progress with clients here than I ever did in New York. Ooh. Yeah. Oh that my kind God. of makes that sense. Kind great. of team accountability, everyone kind of working together towards something. And it's a, it's a small tight group. You're saying three or four even. Right. Yes. Very small. Yeah. Kind yeah, of like yeah, Blab. Small group, just just like Blab. Totally. Yeah, and you like feel more comfortable group. in a little yeah. bit of a smaller setting. And I bring that up because I've talked to a couple of other yeah. personal trainers that are, that are on here and do some of their own shows or, or Periscope. And one, uh, one lady had one idea. I think she went ahead and, and did it. Um, I don't know if she's going to actually fully incorporate what we talked, what we talked about, but what we talked about was, she was going to have a 30 day challenge. And then throughout the week, she would invite those clients to come on. And so she mm. motivating them through the week by face to face talking on blab. As opposed yeah. To just a written right. or an email or that kind of level of, you know, checking in, see how your, your steps are going, how you're doing. So I don't think she's done. It. I haven't seen it on here, but I thought, yeah. you know, maybe that, that extra step that hold them accountable, get their feedback real quick. If they didn't want to jump on the camera, at least they could talk on mm -hmm. the side and might get right. the voice if you know if you can't obviously see them face to face in person all the time. Yeah. So I hope she does. Yeah. You know, maybe that'd be mm -hmm. cool for you guys too. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah. I think community mm -hmm. support is just such a huge thing. And if it's not a paid trainer, at least exactly. let it be something free like labs or periscopes i mean there are so many options these days so i don't think you know anybody really has a value well, we, we always find one they don't have any yeah 
yeah, yeah. not valid. Well, I just wanted to ask yeah. those. I appreciate your feedback on that because yeah. I always hope to, to, to give that back to the people yeah. that come to mind and who I run across in circles with. So I'll leave it at that and I'll look for you on your next one. Yes. Thanks so much. We're here every Friday awesome. at 7 p.m. So yeah. hopefully we'll, we'll see you again. And thanks for the input. Do you want to tell everyone where you, uh, where you, <laughs> uh, right now everything's online, online only. Online. It's uh, all through Amazon. And I've been fortunate just the two months I've been on here, one of the two products sold out of, of inventory real quick. So I'm racing to get that one back in, in stock, Whoa. but the second one is still there. Um, Amazon, if you look for under bronze body, you know, like in an Amazon search or self tanner, it'll pop up, you'll see it. And, uh, you know, we're right. working on getting the best sunscreen in the world too. That our idea is to just not oh. yet concentrate on protecting the skin as well as, you know, making it look pretty at the same time. And yeah. We're working on that as well. So. That's really cool. Maybe we can do like a fun promotion. And you're no, I'm actually in Cincinnati, Ohio. Fun. It's, so we're all oh, over okay. the U.S. We're like a nice. So, oh, wait, I no. I guess there's another uh, one. Called oh, you found it online or? In LA. Did you spell it with an E? Yeah. No E. No, it's no e. Oh, no e. Is no it with e. an e? Look, yeah, his okay. name. Bro I have it with no huh. e. Yeah. Mark, why don't you put? Yeah, in Ohio, KP. Mark, why don't you put the address on the down below uh, for us see. to see if you if you can, or I will if I find if I can find it. It's, well, it's, see the site where my individual site where I'm working on to redo that now. So you can't just find a website, but I was just going to put where you could find it on Amazon real quick. But oh, on Amazon. Um, gotcha. Well, I'm obsessed uh, with self tanner. So really? What's your experience be been? So tell me that. Well, I get I I get sprayed like once a week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sprayed right now. Actually, I'm pretty white. <laughs> but is but that I, no? I just, or just now that you like it? I just like it. Do you go a certain? Yeah, I just, or do you like it darker or lighter? Or I usually go pretty dark. Yeah. Okay. Is that just a personal preference? Yeah. Well, now that it's it's turning into fall, I'll probably do lighter and it, you know, it's like be a, a makeup little bit more now, isn't it? You have to go with the seasons a little, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I won't be showing as much skin now <laughs> that it's it's turning into fall. So I'm not not as worried about it. No, and, and that's what we're noticing too. Just the different times of year. Sometimes it's like a girl's night out, and maybe you just want something for the face, or you know, if it's summertime, yeah, it's gonna be shoulders, arms showing. Maybe a little bit. Right. You don't have to do a full body all the time. Uh, yeah. But what I was realizing with mm. people that make the yeah. transition is that people's different ethnicities, their backgrounds. Yes. There can be different reactions and different kind of look. So we're not right. working on customized mm. tanning solutions in a sense where depending on Eastern European, Middle Eastern, African American, what work best to give you a good yeah. color that you like wow. for your kind of your skin type as it were so we'll that's that. cool just, we don't think it's a one size fits all that's true a different, a different right. tenor, definitely, so. definitely not yeah so that's that's the problem. jessica yeah. mm -hmm. jessica just lives in la she's always naturally tan yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently still no problem tanning yeah, for you tan well and, and that's the scary the thing too that i, I you know i and there was a woman that was saying, you know, she's still jumping into tanning beds. Uh, I've, I've shared some stories of some women. This is a young woman. She was born, uh, not born and raised, but lived in Kentucky for a little bit. Her parents owned their own tanning bed. She did it religiously three, four days a week with her girlfriends. Got married. You know, it's been 10, years, 10, 15, 10 12 years now. Mother to a beautiful baby. Her, one of her friends got, got to go get a check. Friend was in a fine. This lady said, oh, I've never done it. I'll go check it out. Mm. Had something, yeah, and it was on her face. Oh, I... and she was brave enough to show those oh. pictures on her oh. Facebook page, and it was here in May. And it's wow. the treatments they have to do for her face now, and it's cheeks, forehead, nose, dark red to black. Yeah, yeah, tanning bed. So I mean, maybe yeah. that's an extreme case, but that's there is cool. there is a, an increased amount of consultation with with beds. And to the yeah. degree of sun, you know, I, I love to go to the beach too. I love to get you know, that tan on, but it's just that, you know, maybe just that moderation of careful, you know, too much. Basically, a tan is sun damage. You know, we all know right. a little bit. And so that's why yeah. we wanted to. Jessica, you better start getting spray tan. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. I haven't. You know, I actually, the last time I was in a tanning bed was probably over a year ago. It was when I did that last competition because I would only do tanning beds like right before a show. Um, but I would probably, I would think I would do it like five times right. or something right before the show. I never did like ongoing, like regular visits. I just think that's kind it of It feels good like, though. Don't, don't you, you get a good like kind of con yeah. response? We like it. We warm up. Yep. When but time, it's like that vitamin D pump or... You also feel it's good really with good, just yeah. like 20 but, minutes in the sun, that, which I think no. is all you need. Like 20 minutes in yes. real sun. But then you get tan lines. But you never just tan that 20 fast. minutes in the sun. It's like, oh, this, you know, we're out here for an hour or two or, you know. True. Yeah. True. Well, and, well, well, there's the tanning, the spray tanning booth part. I, I've done those two to test it myself. I like them in a, yeah. you know, obviously coverage is amazing. Be very careful breathing that in. It's terrible for your life. Long. Careful with that. Oh, I wish they could give that as an option yeah. in, in the salons or something where you could I know well, you can't hold your breath, they, around, but plugs, they right? do offer nose plugs. Yeah. They do yeah. offer nose plugs yeah. these days. So anyway, we got like, on, a, on a big tangent. Right. We should right. talk I about I don't spray tans another thank you for sharing and, another uh, day. I'll be checking in. <laughs> But thanks anyway. And just, yeah, everyone's should yes, please. Yeah, please. Do the tanning That's true. Yourself. That should not, being being tanned by the sun should not be one of your life goals. <laughs> it's a terrible life, <laughs> life goal to have. Um, yes, thanks for joining, Mark. Be, feel free to jump in anytime. You had some great questions. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll look for you on Friday. Yeah, yeah. thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Bye. We'll be here every Friday. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll wrap mm -hmm. it up here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining our Blab. Oh, Jess must have accidentally clicked out. Don't worry about it, Jess, um, <laughs> unless you want to hop back on and say goodbye. Uh, find us on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook. You can find our online training programs on our website, bodybyhanna.com, jessicarumba.com. Those are great, smart uh, workout programs that can help you reach your goals can kind of give you guidance to reach your goals. So um, check that out. We'll see you next Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for our next Blab.